Hey guys, Charlotte Cheney here, and Bo asked me if I would come in and say hi to you guys and give you a little message. I hope everybody's doing well. I think of you often, and um, I just hope you're doing really well. I hope you're in a place where you feel safe and hopeful, and this is going to be some hard times. I know some of you guys probably had some stuff you were looking forward to that got canceled. I know my 16-year-old's supposed to be getting his driver's license right now, and that was not happening obviously with the DMV not open and another child of mine's going to graduate college and that's not going to happen the way he anticipated as he worked hard for the last four years but um, it's good to be safe and good to be alive and um, it's interesting to be out and about in Garrett County and see all the rednecks with their masks on isn't it it's funny um, anyway but I hope you guys are being safe I hope you're practicing social distancing and that your family is is a safe place for you to be in and um, I hope you'll stay in touch. So um, I guess Bo's going to be talking to you all about um, seeing other people the way that Jesus sees them and that is a really really difficult thing particularly if you're mad at someone. I know I'm having some kind of um, a little bit of tension right now, big tension actually with my brother and my sister and you would think I'm too old to be having sibling rivalry or whatever it is, but I'm not evidently. And um, what I'm really seeing is their behavior toward me and it's hurtful and I'm not seeing them in other light. And as I kind of prepped for this message, I was like, huh, you know, what if I looked at them as, as the Lord saw them? And, and I had a couple of reminders of truths that I hold to. One is that hurting people hurt people. And so if somebody in your life is hurting you, it's a good chance that they are hurting. I mean, people that go and bully people and um, don't treat people with kindness and respect, they are generally not being treated well themselves. And so I just want to remind you that if there is someone in your life, even if it's a family member or somebody that should not be unkind to you. Nobody should be unkind to you, but if it's just, you're like, wow, I really would think that this person would be kind to me. Just remember, hurting people hurt people. And even in this season right now, you don't know what the grown up stress is and everybody's stress, right? Whether it's working or paying bills and all that. So just kind of having grace for each other. Um, another thing is, is, um, you know, praying that God will enter every circumstance. And so, Sometimes I may say something to someone and really regret it, or maybe I said something about someone that, and I really regret it, and I just, I just kind of cringe, and I, I'm like, you know, have you ever seen that scenario where you take a tube of toothpaste and you squeeze it, and then you try and put the toothpaste back in it? You can't, and that's the way words are, and sometimes we just, we lose our temper, we, we get hot-headed, and we, we blow our top, and it's like that toothpaste tube where these words come out and then we calm down later. We have a different feeling later and we're like, gosh, I really said some hurtful things to someone and I, I wish I hadn't have done that. And so um, that does happen, right? And we like, I don't know about you, but I'm not really able to control everything that comes out of my mouth all the time. And so when I do that, when I say something I regret, I, I can go to God and I say, God, please pour your grace in this scenario. Sometimes I pray, God, please help that person to not have heard those hurtful words or whatever. And, and I know that God has the capacity to do things um, really spectacularly, you know, beyond what I could even ask or imagine, right? That's, that's scriptural. So in Genesis uh, 50, verse 20, um, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. It's a, it's a story about Joseph and his brothers selling him, and um, you'll have to go read it if you don't know it. But, but the, the point is, is that sometimes the devil even, or, you know, something is intended for evil, but God can take our prayers over that scenario and he can transform it and make it into something beautiful. And so, you know, even this virus that we're all dealing with, you know, God can take it and, and make beautiful things out of it. I know personally, like I have so many incredible things that are coming from it. I'm, I'm struggling with a lot of areas, 
but one of the things that's happening is I'm doing Zoom calling, which I don't usually do, or FaceTime or whatever, with, with my dad. And um, he's not someone who's really been interested in, in having a close relationship with me before, but for whatever reason, I guess being quarantined, he's calling me three or four, five, six times a week. And it's, it's really special because I never had that before. And even my children, my older children who have kind of set off and started their own lives, they're reaching out. And that, that's really, really special to me. So you know, I wonder what you can think of in your life where someone is coming in and blessing you through this scenario or how you're growing personally. Maybe you're trying something new or maybe you're praying more. Or maybe you're you're just, I don't know, you're just seeing people differently. So, um, you know, I don't know if you guys are on Snapchat and I am not particularly, but I do get on it on occasion. And I see the part that says, um, born this way. If you've ever seen that it's, it's people with these really physical deformities and, um, I don't particularly read the articles, but I see the pictures and I think, gosh, wow, it would be so challenging to live with, with a deformity that everybody's gonna notice. And I can't even imagine like how children can be so innocent. They don't mean it, you know, but that point and gawk and what's wrong with you and you know, whatever, or even adults can do it. And so I was just thinking, you know, like what a blessing it would be if, if when I saw someone who was like, looked differently than what I'm used to seeing that I could be like, what does Jesus see in that person? And, oh, you know, that, that brings me to um, 1 Samuel chapter 16, um, verse 7, or well, verse, yeah, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance on height or stature because I have rejected him for the Lord sees not what man sees. Man sees on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So, you know, if you can really focus on that, God is looking on our heart. And, you know, some of you are like me and you're people pleasers, or you're maybe you're perfectionist and you want to get it perfect, 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 and you don't. And you feel like a failure and you've let someone down and, you know, you just, you just feel deflated. And, you know, when you can remember that God is looking at your heart, so, and, and I have ADD, so I make a lot of mistakes. And it took me many, many years to accept the fact that God loves my heart and he's looking at my heart. And so even when I make a mistake, even when I screw up, even when I lose my temper, even when I say something I regret, he is looking at my heart and he loves my heart and he loves your heart. And so I wanna encourage you today, try and love others as, God loves you as God loves them. And if you see someone who's hurting, remember hurting people are hurt, will hurt people. And so maybe when someone hurts you, you can follow a little bit of scripture that says, love your enemy. So, but with boundaries, don't let someone bully you. But if you have the, the ability to love someone who's hurting you or hurting someone else, maybe that person really needs to be loved for the first time. So anyway, thank you for for joining me today. I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to pray for you all. Dear Lord, I just lift these children up to you, Lord. I just um, thank you for their presence here. I thank you for all that you're doing in their lives. Lord, I thank you for this season of challenge that we can grow and strengthen in who we are and who we will be for you, God. Lord, I just pray all the lessons we're learning through this season that will not be lost, that we will just continue to become more and more in touch with you and who you're calling us to be. I pray that gifts are being revealed and relationships are being restored and goals are being set for all of us in your holy name. Keep us healthy, Lord. Help us have hope and help us to shine light into your world. Amen. Take care.